Today we are going to talk about how much does it cost, is it easy or even safe to travel in North Vietnam. This year's labor holiday, I spent 5 days in North Vietnam and this is how much I've spent. The cost may be varied, depends on different factors, but it's also kind of easy to predict. Preparation before trip, you got a ticket, visa, SIM card. Depending on where you're from, the ticket and the visa can cost you. And while you arrive at your destination, for hotel, you got booking, Agoda, Airbnb, you can estimate the price. Regarding to hotels, there are several things that I want to mention. The first one is, it can be cancelled if it's from the internet, I mean for not expensive hotels. And secondly, you might not need to book that for the first night because it depends on when your plane will arrive and how much time it takes from the airport to the hotel because there is a possibility that your plane will be delayed. And the last thing is actually you can negotiate the price. I'm not sure if in your country but in China, when you arrived at some hotel late, there is actually a late night price. I've never done that before but there was time when I wanted to tip it. Uh, the owner actually provided a negotiated price for me and also this time the last night in Vietnam I arrived there around 1 a.m. so actually I can't book the hotel on booking so I went inside and negotiated the price with the owner. I mean she didn't agree to the lowered price but I changed another hotel and it did work. For food I have no ideas but in domestic I use TikTok for recommendation and also there's one website I can recommend for you. In this website you can have a general idea of how much it costs. Here you can change your currency. I will put the link uh, in description. So is it easy to travel in North Vietnam? Well, maybe it's because it's closer to China. So some of them do speak Chinese and if you are in the capital, the tourist place, the vendor also speak English, so that's kind of okay. But I wouldn't call it easy because a lot of places there are no English sign, people don't speak Chinese or English, so you're kind of in a difficult situation unless you have Google Translation, but that obviously slow down your speed and the travel experience. About the transportation, I know pretty well that you can rent a motorbike in Vietnam and that will make everything easier. But I wouldn't recommend you to do that if you don't have a drive license and also if you only stay there for a few days because the traffic there is a little bit uh, chaos. My experience in Hanoi is the public transportation is easy to get and the interval, I mean the time interval is short. But while I was in Haiphong, the cost of bus is kind of expensive and also in the interval it's almost 30 minutes and there are several tourist spaces which doesn't have public transportation to cover. You have to use Grab to take a taxi which will increase your cost dramatically. But uh, I think if you are able to communicate with them or even speak Vietnam, that will make everything easier. Because even for bus driver, he can put you in somewhere closer to your destination instead of the bus station stop. And also based on my experience with the minibus, the driver can also put you in your designated place. There is even one time a couple was walking and then they get on the bus and the driver take them, I think maybe less than 1000 meter and they drop off. Charge nothing. So if you somehow manage to speak Vietnamese, then congratulations, everything will be easy for you. So is it safe to travel in North Vietnam? Well, how can I address that? Let me just share my three stories. The first one is the first time I went to Vietnam. I was staying in the bus station and someone just tapped me. I was like, what the fuck? He, someone touched me. And when I turned around, the guy he pointed on the ground is because my wallet had dropped on the ground. Wait a moment. So that was five or six years ago. I was using this kind of bag and the wallet dropped out. I have no idea. I was about to get on the bus as long as the bus arrived. That guy totally saved my life and I felt so sorry for being aggressive. I mean, the, my thoughts was someone told me I was getting kind of angry. The other story is that whenever I want to do something or I encounter some problem, whether it's I didn't pay enough money for the bus or I try to find something, they are always kind of Vietnamese assisting me. So my experience is that as long as you are being humble and you ask politely for others assist and also when you see someone need assist you can also do your part. No matter where you go it should not be that kind of difficult unless, I don't know, terrorists. Um, look, I'm not only gonna feed you sweets. This journey I also had two kind of unpleasant experience. The first one is about the minibus. I was about to take the 7.30 p.m. bus, but it turns out there is a minibus which is two hours earlier, so I took that one in bus station. And as I mentioned before, the logic of minibus is they are going to try to fix as many passengers 
in a bus, so sometimes they were stopping some location and then pick somebody. And uh, maybe because it's nighttime, so there are people get drunk and then get on the bus. And there was one tiny guy. I think he gets drunk, so he kind of took uh, more space than he's supposed to do, and he put his legs, elbows. Uh, close to me, and uh, I was kind of okay. Okay, don't get fuzzy because there are many Vietnamese. I don't want uh, you know in contact with them. But uh, he started to took more space, and I just pushed his elbow back because at that time there had only two or three Vietnamese on the bus, so I dared to do that. And the funny thing is, once I did that, that guy stayed far away from me. I'm not saying this is the right thing to do. I just want to mention. If I was a girl, that situation would definitely be more awkward. So my advice for you to get away with this kind of a situation is, the first one, you can take the bigger bus so you don't have to encounter this kind of situation because usually that will be destination A to B, it won't stop in middle. And the second thing is, try take the public transportation in the daytime because in that time you want to come across the late night thing and at the same minibus i have a camera bag right and someone just used my camera bag as his footrest that guy was pretty young and carrying a guitar or something with him so i don't know what he was thinking <laughs> uh, the last story is about the hotel as I mentioned previously, I found a hotel in Booking and I went there and negotiated the price because it was midnight and uh, she didn't agree, so I went to another hotel and that guy, he agreed the negotiated price, but he also promised uh, the breakfast included, which there is no such thing as breakfast, so that is dishonest. So do I recommend you travel to North Vietnam? Well, I don't have a direct answer for you. I think everything is an opportunity and a risk. What you might get from this opportunity? What you might lose from this risk? Make an evaluation and then you have your decision. See you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.